when I'm not thinking about losing focus and getting distracted, I don't think about things that are distracting. So if I don't think about that and then I end up not losing focus, then I end up getting focused work done. Welcome to the Tilt Parenting Podcast, a weekly podcast featuring interviews and conversations aimed at inspiring, informing, and supporting parents raising differently wired kids. I'm your host, Debbie Reber, and today's episode features a conversation with my 11-year-old son, Asher, about focus, what it feels like to struggle with it, and what strategies we're using to help make it less of an issue in his day-to-day life. To learn more about this podcast and Tilt, the revolution for parents raising atypical kids, visit TiltParenting.com. I wanted to bring Asher into the conversation here on this podcast because he has a lot of thoughts and insights about all the stuff that we parents are trying to figure out. And for everyone out there who's raising a unique kid, my hope is that our short conversations will in some way be interesting or helpful or thought provoking. My plan is to talk with Asher about all kinds of topics, things he's working on, current events, strategies that fail or succeed, and really anything else that comes up in our world that feels like it would resonate with other families. For our first conversation, we talked about the issue of focus, which for a kid with pretty severe ADHD who is both inattentive and hyper-focuses, comes up a lot in the course of him doing schoolwork and creative projects. So Asher... This is our first recording that we're doing for our podcast. Why, yes, it is. And before we start, I wondered if you wanted to introduce yourself so people know how old you are and anything else you think is important for them to know. Okay. Well, I am Asher. I am moving away from the microphone. And then I'm moving back. I'm 11 years old, and I live in Amsterdam, et et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Something you need to know about Asher is that he likes to move. So sitting still, like for a podcast interview, for example, it's not so easy. You may notice some variations in his audio levels as his position with the mic is pretty fluid. So Asher... The reason that I thought it was so interesting to invite you to participate in this podcast is because I think that a lot of parents would find your insight really interesting and potentially useful in their own lives if they have children who are going through things and the parents may not understand how to best help them or maybe not even really understand what it feels like for their child to be in certain situations or to be dealing with certain challenges And I feel like your insight could be really helpful. So I thought... Or maybe have kids who are are way too awesome. Like what if they had a kid who was way too awesome and they didn't know how to act? That's a good point. (laughs) Well, what I was curious about what we could talk about today is that you and I have been having conversations lately about the idea of staying focused and how you get distracted pretty easily. And you know what I know? That's a huge problem for lots of kids. And I know there are lots of parents who are really don't really know how to best help their kid and they don't understand why they're getting distracted. Okay. And as I'm telling you this, you're blinking your eyes <laughs> back and forth at well, me. Well, you started it. <laughs> which makes me feel like you're getting distracted. So, uh, sorry. Distraction. Obviously, this is a huge problem for kids who have trouble staying on task, whether it's doing schoolwork or tying their shoes to get out the door or really doing just about anything. And while kids being distracted can be uber frustrating for teachers and parents, it took me a while to realize it's not something the distracted kids themselves necessarily feel good about either. In our house, distraction seems to be taking center stage these days when it comes to present challenges. And in the past year specifically, I've noticed Asher getting more and more upset with himself when his own distraction tendencies screw up his plans for what he wanted to accomplish. Like, say he's got a goal of completing a bunch of models in Photoshop before dinner for a mod he and his dad are making. But then he fell down the old YouTube rabbit hole, and by the time I come to the table for dinner, he realized he squandered all of his time and didn't get any textures done. This kind of thing happens a lot, and it's a situation he finds incredibly frustrating, and I totally get it. 
I asked Asher if he could explain to me if he knows what the getting distracted process actually entails for him. Well, normally I'm like, hey, I think I'll do this. And, and, then, and, and then I'm like, oh, cool, I had this open too. And, and then I go over to that. And then, I, and then I'm like, oh, no, but I also had this. And I go over to that. And then I never get anything done. Are you aware that it's happening in the moment? Um, sometimes. Like, sometimes I'll just be like, oh, crap. I, ah. And then I won't be. And then I'll feel too embarrassed to, right, that I just spent all my time and I didn't get anything done. So you kind of notice it afterwards and then you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen that happen. And I can tell you're really, truly frustrated about that. It's because I've used all my time and I haven't accomplished what I meant to do with that time. And how does that feel? Well, that that feels very, very, very annoyed. Yeah. Annoying. I'm I'm not sure how to say that. Annoying. You can't say it feels annoyed. No. (laughs) Feels annoying. Yes, it does. I asked Asher if feeling annoyed was enough of a motivator to help him try something different next time or work on not getting distracted in the future. You have the chin in your hand pondering pose at the moment. Are you considering your response? Yes. What was the question again? I lost focus in imitating the thinker. Hmm. My question Hmm. was... Hmm. What do you do with that frustration? Is it motivating for you to make a change? Partially. Right. Why? Because you, you don't want to be frustrated and then do the exact same thing next time. Right? Like, I want to make a change, but I don't actually. But then I still lose focus. I'm like, I'm planning to do that, and then I lose focus. And I'm like, <sighs> it's only when I'm, it's only when I don't think about losing focus and when I don't lose focus, that I actually get focus work done. Say that again. When I'm not thinking about losing focus and getting distracted, I don't think about things that are distracting. So if I don't think about that, and then I end up not losing focus, then I end up getting focused work done. That's very interesting. Is that something you consciously choose to do or it just happens sometimes? Yeah, it happens. Like, like I'd say like um, four-sixths of the time. Otherwise known as two-thirds of the time. Otherwise known as... <laughs> as zero point six 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 six. Right now we're spending a lot of time addressing this issue of focus. Like... It's one of our major skills we're trying to build. Last year, we made these little planning sheets where Asher would write down his primary personal goal that he wanted to accomplish that day, and then he would check in on it as the day progressed. That worked for a while, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it totally did. Why are you shaking your head? No. (laughs) Uh, No, it it, it did work. It worked for a while, but it seems like it stopped working. Yeah. So what we're doing now is we have created screen time planning worksheets. Why, yes, we have. Do you think you could just explain what a screen time planner worksheet is and how you're using it? There are like, there are six bubbles, one, one for each half hour. Um, though if you, if you have more or less, you can add more or less, right? And then in, I get... For the afternoon, I get to write my primary goal and my secondary goals, right? And I and basically, I work on the primary goal when I've done that. Or in, if I can't, can't like like say I was I was doing something and I needed inspiration, then I would go do second goal, right? What about the concept of time? Like how are yeah, I have a I have a timer that goes off every thirty minutes, and every time I do that, I'm like, hmm, can I spend another can I spend another bubble? Oh, good, I can. Well, then I'll reset this timer and I'll fill that out. So, do you feel like that strategy is working for now? Yes, 
Ex- except for the fill that out part. <laughs> I'm filling it out in my head. Mm. Do you feel like it's not as effective when you do it in your head? Mm, yes, because I have lost uh, like 15 minutes on a number of occasions. <laughs> Because I was just like, oh, yeah, I have another one. And then I'm like, no, I went 10 minutes extra. It definitely feels like a work in progress. So in case you didn't get that, the screen time planning worksheet basically breaks down his allotted screen time for the day into 30 minute blocks of time. And before he begins a block of time, his job is to consciously decide how he wants to spend that time, what he wants to accomplish during it, and then set a 30 minute timer. Then once the timer goes off, he has to fill in the corresponding bubble for that time block and determine if he has time for another 30 minute block. If so, he needs to consciously plan how he wants to use that time and so on. By the way, I'm including a downloadable PDF for this iteration of the screen time planner in the show notes in case you want to see what it looks like and adapt it for your own needs. But yes, to reiterate, Figuring out how to help Asher develop the neuro muscles to stay focused and reach his goals is definitely still a work in progress. With Asher, I know enough by now to embrace a strategy when it's working, use the heck out of it, and then when it stops working, which it nearly always does, tweak it or adapt it, or in some cases, just toss it out and start from scratch with a new approach. The screen time planning worksheet seems to be working for now, but I'll check back in with Asher in a few weeks to reassess and make sure it's still helping him stay focused. Well, I want to thank you for chatting with me today. You're welcome. Is there anything else you want to add about this idea of staying focused or getting distracted easily? It's very annoying when you get distracted. Yeah. Do you feel like you're going to be able to figure out a strategy that will help you stay more focused? Yes, eventually. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Tilt Parenting Podcast. Visit tiltparenting.com slash podcast for a list of all the podcast episodes. And for the show notes for this episode, including PDFs of the two different iterations of our screen time planning worksheets, you can go to tiltparenting.com slash session three. And if you like what you heard today, I'd be so grateful if you could visit iTunes and leave a review for this podcast and subscribe. As a new podcast, getting reviews and subscribers is so important to help us find our audience and also to help parents raising differently wired kids find us. Thanks again for tuning in. And for more information on the Tilt Revolution and to sign up for our community, visit www.tiltparenting.com.